Hello everybody, Greg here with Online Tennis Instruction. Today's video, I'm going to show you how you can use your non-dominant arm as your reactive brake on your forehand, which will help prevent you from over-rotating, but also can lead to more effortless power. Now, a lot of players, when they are hitting their forehands, they tend to open up too early with the, with the chest, and it's almost a continuous motion like this where having to recruit muscle, but also it pulls the swing or the strings away from the target, shortening the hitting zone. The idea is when you use the kinetic chain, your body is going to rotate and the swing will translate. So in other words, your body is going to rotate this way, it's going to stop and then the swing is going to keep going, almost like a tangent off a circle. Right? But how you do that is you've got to use your left arm or your non-dominant arm as a reactive brake to stop that rotation at impact. If you watch the best players in the world, they'll keep the upper body extremely still through that contact point here for at least about a tenth of a second. So I'm going to show you today how you can use that non-dominant arm or left arm as your reactive brake. So I'm going to show you some progressions you can work through using three different drills to help you to use that non-dominant arm or your left arm more effectively on your forehand. The idea is when you use the left arm as your reactive brake, it's going to stop the front side from rotating so then the other side in this instance, the hitting arm will then accelerate. And they say about one and a half times faster than you can contract the muscles, right? So it's almost like a whipping effect. So when you stop one side, see how the other one will accelerate. So you have that whipping effect. So the first thing I want you to think of is just divide your body into two halves. You've got your right side and you've got your left side. And then you want to have, pretend you have an imaginary post and you transfer the weight from the right leg. So you have this imaginary post chair and you're kind of wrapping the left side over that right side. Now, as I wrap the right side over the left, I almost feel like it's like an imaginary post right here or a pole. And you're going from one side to the other. Now, what I want you to think of is like you're wearing a cloak and you want to wrap that cloak around your body. So you have to then rotate, but when you do that, you've got to stop. In my instance, this left side, so that cloak can then wrap around you. So you can do that over and over. You can do both sides, right? So you start to feel that, okay? Now, once you've got the feel for that, I would like for you to then go into the second drill, is the X factor. Just so you can start to feel how you engage in the body. So you can put both hands on your shoulders like this. You want to kind of step out and see how I want to try to turn your shoulders more than your hips. Of course, dissociation, where you create this nice trunk stretch. Now as you step forward, try to sit in the chair so you get nice and low. And you're going to rotate up to contact to transfer the weight all the way to the front leg. You will kind of feel how front leg straightens creating that imaginary post, all right? Now, from, from this position, you're gonna step out, you turn, you sit in the chair, the power's gonna start from the ground up, right? So you can think of pushing from the back foot, the back leg, or you can think of taking the rear hip and core together and rotating them up, right? So let's watch that again. So I'm ready here, I'm turning, sitting, and I'm pushing to the back foot and rotate and hipping the core through, right? So you want to get a feel for that. So it's going to help you with the next drill. Notice how that weight is transferring to that front leg, and the front leg is straightening as a result of that uncoiling, where you're coiling, uncoiling from the ground up. Now we'll take, take a look at the next drill, where you can do this up against a wall or a fence. All right, so now for the third progression, we're going to use this fence. You can use a wall at home, but we find that if you find that you're over rotating with the upper body, or you're struggling to use this left arm effectively, it actually helps to turn the palm forward there. So the arm will actually kind of bend like this. So as you rotate up to contact, you'll see how the shoulder is going to kind of pull the arm away. And then the, the hand's going to kind of get into a position where it's just in front of your, your chest like this. It's kind of a little bit of an exaggeration, but it's a good one when you're trying to work on this and create the stopping effect. All right, so I'm going to use this pole to give myself some support. And I'm in a neutral stance, but I've also, the pole is about 45 degrees away from me and, and in front of me. So I want to find the contact point, get nice and low like we're doing with the X factor. But then you're going to rotate up. Now, because your hand is connected to the wall or the pole in this instance, it's going to prevent that shoulder from over rotating. So you're going to feel how that front shoulder stops. So I'm going to rotate up to my point of contact. Now, as I do that, Notice how my weight is transferred to the front leg, and the front leg is straightening as a result of that rotation we did with the X factor. Okay, so I'm starting like this, hands about shoulder height, and I'm going to rotate up. 
You start to feel that right there. Feel how that front leg is straightening, your body is lifting at contact there. Most of the weight's to that front foot. Now if you're still struggling to feel that, you can start to think about working the, the rear hip, so in my case the right hip and core against the front shoulder, the left shoulder. So it's almost like you're straightening the rear leg, it's going to bring the right hip and core through, and almost think about working one against the other like an X. So you're driving the left shoulder back and the right, right hip forward like this, in this direction. So you can do that a couple times just to get the feeling for that, and then you can take it back to the drill up against the fence, you may feel that stopping effect a little bit better. And once you've got a feel for that, you can just step away from the fence or the wall without touching it now and just kind of get a feel. And you'll start to feel how the front side stops rotating as you, as you uncoil up towards your contact point. You'll feel that stopping effect. Okay. Now, it also helps some players to think that it's almost like you're bringing your, your hitting shoulder towards that hand there. Let's be careful you don't over rotate, but sometimes that helps players. I'm bringing this shoulder to the hand. All right. So if you do this, you'll start to feel that stopping effect. So next time you're out there, they're playing. You know, you can drop self feed some balls where you just trying to drop the ball and get a feel for this, and you can try it in a rally. So give these drills a try right now at home. And if you have any questions or comments, please post them below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please hit that subscribe button. And thank you so much for your support and for watching.